Hello, everyone. My name is Anastasia, and I'm a part of Kotlin Language Evolution team. Our team is working on all language design features, as well as on context parameters. That's why I'm here. I will share with you the latest updates on the design status of context parameters. We will focus on use cases and cover some technical details, as well as plans for the future. So, let's start. Before adding a new feature to the language, our motivation is always driven by particular use cases and the associated problems. It's the main driver of cotton design. That's why most of my talk will be about use cases and where context parameters can come in handy. And we will start with this one. Imagine we are backend developers and we have a class called logger. Also, we have a top level extension function called process. And we, as responsible backend developers, want to record which order we are processing in this function. So what should we do? Probably the first idea is to add a function parameter. This works, but only for simple cases. The problems begin when we have several functions which require the logger. And as you can see, it already looks messy, but in real life, there would be probably uh, other function parameters in these functions. And, and it results in horrible boilerplate code. So the question is, could we get rid of the repeated order logger here? Theoretically, we can try to use an extension receiver, but in these functions, extension receivers already exist. So, as an alternative, we can create a global property and try to use it in our functions. But this is better. Uh, but with a global property, we cannot pass different parameters that might depend on the context of call to the logger constructor. So that's when context parameters come into play. And let's set the context parameter to our process function. And you can think of context parameters as implicit parameters that present in color scope. And we added context parameters not only to our process function, but to other functions as well. And now our previous example could be written using context parameters. Here, to use our functions now and pass the context, we should use the function called with. We include a logger instance into the context, and we no longer have problem with boilerplate code. Or, another example, we can include a logger instance into the context at the top level, for example, before running all tests, and use our functions in tests without having to pass the logger. In both examples, we include implicitly a logger, a logger service into the context. So this is the first use case where context parameters could solve potential problems. If you, if you need a set of services throughout the entire code base, you can include them implicitly using context parameters. Now let's explore the next use case where context parameters are useful. And we will be Android developers. And we have to write a property which converts types from the pack compose library, dp offset to offset. This is what our property could look like. It's an extensive property for dp offset, which returns an offset object. And to create an offset object, we should pass the position to the offset constructor. dp offset has properties called x and y, which describe the position. And to create an offset object, we should pass its position to the offset constructor. But these properties have type dp. And the offset constructor expects flow type. In this context, dp type represents device-independent pixels. All devices have the same number of these pixels. And flow type represents actual device pixels. So we need to convert dp type to flow type 
or device-independent pixels to actual device pixels. If you are an experienced Compose developer, then you are familiar with an interface called density. And this interface has a function called 2px, which converts dp type to flow type. And that's exactly what we need here. Moreover, when you are working with dp offset and offset objects, you are likely doing it inside the density scope. In other words, it makes no sense to use our property outside of density. So, to use 2px functions, we need to somehow include density in our property. What options do we have? Theoretically, we can place our property in the density interface. It is interesting and would work, but we are not Jetpack Compose library developers to change the library source code. So the best practice option is to use context parameters. We added a context parameter, and as you can see, we use an underscore here, which means that density exists implicitly in color scope. You can use an underscore when you don't want to set a context parameter name. So now the functions, which we wrote before, 2px, are resolved because our property works in the density scope and has access to density functions. So scopes provide another use case for context parameters. And if you are working within a specific scope and you want to define that your declaration should work within this specific scope, you can use context parameters for this. Now move on to more complicated use case. And let's pretend we are maintainers of a DSL library. And our library has a function which builds a client object. And we assume that our users will write code like this. This looks nice, but we want to improve how our users can declare a date of birth. Can they do this? Yes, in Kotlin we have a feature which allows to create an infix function. So let's add one to our example. And now, with this infix function, our date of birth field looks better. But what's the problem with this code? Let's think about this. We are writing a library, and our library, our users will include our library in their source code, and not only our library. And if we create 12 infix functions for all months, then they will be available not only inside the builder, as we expected, but also outside of it. And it will lead to the scope pollution. And we, as library maintainers, should be cautious about the visibility of our functions. So this is an interesting way how you can use context parameters here. Let's create an object called client builder context. Then we will add a context parameter to our infix function. And as you saw in the previous examples, there is no way to use this function outside of the required context. But we don't want to force our users to set the context explicitly in their code. So what we will do, we will change the builder function and push the context there. And now there is no way to use our infix fun function outside of the builder because the required context will be missing. With context parameters, you can create more complicated DSL structures. To say in more formal way, as we considered in this example, you can declare a member which will be available only when the specific DSL scope has certain type arguments. Also, if you're familiar with Scala, then you probably know a pattern called type classes. With context parameters, you can create externally implemented interfaces or type classes in Kotlin. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to, to speak about this use case in details, but you can read about this in the context parameter keep. So this list covers all popular cases for context parameters. And we discard them based on your feedback during the design process. Now let's talk about technical details. Function types are extended with context parameters. And as you can see, it is only possible to mention types. Names are not supported. 
This is because we don't want to inspect a body of lambda, try to find the names during overload resolution. But what does it mean in practical terms? In lambdas, context parameters behave as if they were declared with an underscore as its name. And in this example, the function called log doesn't, requi doesn't require an extension receiver because the logger exists implicitly in caller scope. But if you want to specify that you use a function or a property from a context parameter, you can def the special function called implicit. About the limitations. It is not possible to use context parameters in constructors and in classes. It was allowed in the previous design iteration, but now we cannot promise that we will reintroduce this, this feature. But you can try to use the operator function invoke with context parameters instead. For the GVM, a function with, additional with context parameters is represented as a function with additional parameters. It's pretty similar how extension receivers work now. And for the GVM, the particular order is context parameters, if present, extension receiver, if present, and regular value parameters. And you are probably here for this part of talk. Well, context parameters isn't actually a new feature. It's a very old feature request that has already undergone two name rebrandings. Firstly, it was multi multiple receivers. Next, it was context receivers. And now it's context parameters. And the most popular question is, why did we drop context receivers? Well, the main objection to the previous design was the potential scope pollution. Having too many functions available in the scope makes it difficult to find the right one. And it becomes much harder to establish where certain member is coming from. And we believe that context parameters provide a better first step in understanding how implicit context resolution fits in Kotlin without that issue. Now all Kotlin teams are working hard on stabilizing context parameters. Unfortunately, the prototype based on new context parameters design isn't available now, but it will be after, after Kotlin 2.2. So, that's all. Thank you for your attention.